Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study equations where we use the distributive property. Here's one example. I actually have it here too, the same equation, because I'm actually going to solve it in two different ways. And the distributive property has to do with the fact that if we have three times and then a sum or the difference in parentheses, then we can open up the parentheses, we will get three times x and three times five. So I will first simplify this by writing three times x and or plus three times five. Three times five, I'll simplify that or calculate it, I get 15. Right? And then over here, of course, a t. So what happened was I got three times x and three times five out of that. And now I'm going to put my margin here, marginal notes as to what I'm going to do to both sides of this equation. I want to have the term with x alone here, I want to isolate it. So I'm going to get rid of the 15 by subtracting 15 from both sides. So that leaves 3x alone. Here 18 minus 15 equals 3. And then of course you just divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 1. Okay, now let's do it in a different way. And in this way I'm not going to use the distributive property. Instead, I notice that there's 3 here, 3 times this quantity. And then here is a number that's also divisible by 3. So, I will start out by dividing both sides by 3. And then that leaves 6 on this side, right? On this side, the 3 and divide by 3 cancel each other, so I'm left with x plus 5 alone. And then, of course, here now, you would subtract 5 from both sides, so you get again x equals 1. It ends up being a little bit shorter in this case, simply because 18 was easily divisible by 3. Now let's do this one where there's lots of negatives and see how the distributive property worked. I will do the same. It's going to be negative 4 times x, and then negative 4 times this. This time there's going to be a subtraction involved. First, negative 4 times x would be negative 4x, then the subtraction. And then, negative 4 times 2, okay? I'm going to circle this 2. I'm going to multiply negative 4 times 2. That's negative 8. Okay. And now there are, there are no longer other parentheses here, but I see there's a no double negative here. And then over here is negative 40. Of course, the double negative now, we can simplify that. Make it into a plus. So we get negative 4x plus 8 equals negative 40. And now, plus 8, I will subtract 8 from both sides to get rid of that. So I have negative 4x, and over here I get negative 48. And then lastly, I just divide both sides by negative 4. So x is now alone. And then 48 divided by 4 would be 12. And it is positive 12 because I have a negative divided by a negative. The other way, I will solve it another way too. And that is that I start out by dividing both sides by negative 4. All right. That should make life easier with the negatives, get rid of some of the negatives. This disappears and I have only x minus 2. And on the other side, negative 40 divided by negative 4. It's the same as 40 divided by 4, or just 10. And then x minus 2 equals 10, so I have to add 2 to both sides. And then x is alone, and then 10 plus 2. 12, of course, the same answer. So that one was actually simpler. But we will definitely need to use the distributive property in certain equations as well. Now let's try this one. If I use the distributive property here, I will get 5 times that and 5 times that. So there will be 5 times negative 2x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then the x. 5 times 3. And then here negative 20. Now I'll get rid of the 15 by subtracting 15 from both sides. So we get negative 10x. Then over here negative 35. And lastly just divide by negative 10, so x is now alone, 
and we get 35 divided by 10, which is 3 and 5 tenths, 3 and a half. This one, I can use distributive property here, but let me do it the other way now instead, where we divide both sides by something, okay? Divide both sides by what? It's this number here, negative 3. Because then I'm left with negative 3x plus 1 here. And then 9 divided by negative 3 leaves me negative 3. Now I'll get rid of the plus 1 next. So I subtract 1 from both sides. And I get negative 3x equals negative 4. And then lastly divide by this number. Divide by negative 3. So we get x equals negative 4 divided by negative 3, which is the same as 4 over 3, or 1 and 1 third.